Hi, so here's my 2015 Subaru Forester uh, XT. This is the, the model with the direct injection 2 liter engine. And I think some of you who are driving direct injection cars may have heard that these cars tend to have a carbon buildup problem on the intake valves. And that happens specifically because on a, normally fuel, on a normal fuel injected car, the fuel is in, injected into the intake manifold just before the intake valve. And as the valve opens, the air fuel mixture passes into the cylinder. And that has a, the gasoline has a detergent which cleans off the tops of the valves. And that's over the lifetime of the car. You know, you get a little bit of carbon, but it's basically a, a non-issue. But on direct injection cars, the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder, kind of like where the spark plug is in a different spot. It's done at high pressure. No fuel ever passes through the intake manifold or through the valves, and that can result in carbon buildup. If you do a bunch of Googling or look on YouTube, you'll find people taking apart their engines after a certain amount of time, and there's tons and tons of carbon on the intake valve, which can result in drivability problems and other types of issues like that. So I'm going to try to do something about this on my car. I only have about 5,000 miles on this car. I've owned it uh, over a year now, but I just don't drive that much. But I figure now's the time to start trying to treat this carbon buildup problem just to try to prevent it, perhaps. I don't have any science to say that whether what I'm about to show you will work or not, but why not? It's inexpensive and I might as well try. So this is the Subaru Carbon Clean. Uh, it says for gasoline engines only, removes interior engine carbon deposits, decrease harmful emissions. Well, okay, about that far. It eventually says, uh, it says corrosive. Uh, some of the stuff on the back here, it just talks about what this does. You know, stops carbon knock, prevents pre-ignition, improves drivability. And then the directions for this are pretty easy. It says warm engine to operating temperature, turn off ignition, attach carbon cleaning tool to the bottle. This is the carbon cleaning tool right here. So basically what this is, is you can attach the bottle to this. It has something to hang the bottle by, and then it comes with this vacuum hose here, which you can attach to a, a vacuum port on your, on your engine. So that's how it sucks the, the liquid in. It does it in a metered fashion. So... Um, Attach the carbon tool, securely mount the bottle, fit the vacuum wedge into the central vacuum port, obtain a short piece of hose to attach to the wedge as close to the vacuum port as possible, turn on the ignition with the engine running, open valve valve to supply cleaner, run engine at idle until the bottle is one third empty, close ball valve, increase RPM until uh, the engine is running smoothly, and then they return and then return to idle. Repeat this step two more times, turn off ignition, Reconnect vacuum line, start engine, and run above idle for several minutes. Test drive vehicle to ensure normal appearance of exhaust emission, so no more smoke. And then the danger stuff here is really just talking about if you drink it or get it in your eyes. And here at the bottom you can see manufactured in the U.S. for Subaru of America for gasoline engines only. And there's the part number if you're just interested. SOA868V9165. And I paid about $8 for this bottle here. And my intent is to use this every oil change, so every six months or so on my car. And then the, uh, the tool for installing it here, this, wasn't exactly cheap. Uh, it was about $40 from my Subaru dealer. I'm not quite sure if, you know, how necessary this is, but I figure I'll, I'll do it as specified you know, in the instructions. There it is. So I'm going to give this a try, and we'll see how it works. So here's the engine in the Subaru Forester XT. It's the Subaru FA20DIT, that's direct injected turbo. Same engine that's in the 2015 and on WRXs, and I think the LeVorg in Japan and you know other cars. But many cars come with direct injection now. You have BMWs and Hondas and whatnot. So I'm trying to figure out the best possible place to inject the carbon cleaner into the engine. It says a central vacuum point. And I see there's one here it goes to something, but that's on this particular intake uh, runner here. So that's not very central. I, I'd really like something kind of over here in the middle. All right, here's the vacuum hose I'm going to use. You just use some needle nose and you just get the clamp and it slides off pretty easily. Actually, a little too easy. I wonder if it could have come off and boost. Anyways, um, this hose...
basically I'm just verifying that it is what it is. Okay, so that hose comes and it connects right here to the central plenum. So I don't see any valves or anything funky on there. So this is the hose I'm going to use to put the carbon clean into the engine. Here's the carbon clean bottle. You just basically take the cap off and you screw the tool into it. And then you make sure that the ball valve is off. Off is when this is 90 degrees. So this is the flow of the liquid comes up from a pipe and out, out the tube. So when the valve is turned to be in line with it, that means the valve is on. When it's like that, that means it's off. Okay, so you just hook this on. It does not hold the bottle very securely. And then you take the nozzle and you wedge it into the vacuum hose like that. Okay? Before you actually do anything, you do need to use safety goggles. Remember, you need to wait until your car is fully warmed up before you do the carbon clean. Use the oil temperature gauge on your multifunction display to know when your engine is up to temperature. 190 degrees Fahrenheit I would consider fully up to temperature. So I'm going to wait until I'm at that level before I start this procedure. As a side note, if you're wondering how long it takes to warm up your car before you can drive with boost and have some fun with the engine, I typically wait until 150 degrees Fahrenheit on the oil temperature. At that point, I'm confident the engine is warmed up sufficiently that if I do any spirited driving, it's not going to cause any additional wear from a cold engine. When the engine hits 150 degrees Fahrenheit on oil temperature when you're first warming it up, that corresponds to about 160 degrees of water temperature on this particular engine. And I consider that a good fully warmed up temperature. That's annoying.
Okay, so it's all empty now. Um, not very much smoke, just a little bit of um, white smoke, almost looked like mist. Uh, but that's about it. So I'm going to disconnect this from the vacuum port. And I am going to reconnect the vacuum hose and start the engine, let it idle, kind of see if any more clears out. It didn't really have too much trouble running. There's a tiny bit left in this bottle, but it's basically empty. So there, this whole bottle went in there. Um, hopefully that did something. We'll see. We'll see how it drives. I'm going to go on a test drive now. Well, we been driving around a little bit, and um, I have to say everything works great. Uh, car's running fine. Uh, it's weird it said, you know, check for clear tailpipe emissions and whatnot, but I have to say there hasn't really been any weird emissions. Um, and since I, you know, other than after a third of the bottle, it, it idled a little funny at first. But then, um, you know, I revved it up, and I saw a little bit of mist looking out, out the, coming out the back. But it smoothed out pretty quickly, and on the final third of the bottle, I almost didn't even notice anything. It ran perfectly. Maybe after I revved it up a couple times, it felt a little stumbly. But once I started driving, everything is totally normal. Um, no issues whatsoever with the car. So, yeah, I don't know if this is going to make any difference, but why not? It's maintenance, right?